Hi everyone, welcome to this video. Uh, we are going to show you a technique that involves creating uh, fake ambient occlusion maps in Blacksmith 3D. The whole process will probably take you about um, a little under five minutes to do if you want to get some really good quality at it. It's a manual process. Uh, allows you to do it uh, through using brush strokes, um, but it gives you a really powerful effect. And uh, because it's a manual process, you'll have the freedom to uh, get whatever kind of uh, look you're going for, which isn't necessarily consistent with absolute 100% accurate lighting, but just might look cool. So anyway, what we did here is first, because we're starting with the Second Life avatar, um, it'll, it's pretty low resolution and this technique works better on higher resolution models. So we simply subdivided uh, the, the, uh, the mesh two times. So we clicked on the model tab here and then this subdivide tool and clicked on, we um, control A selects everything and we uh, just uh, hit the subdivide selected twice in order to get uh, two iterations. We could have easily just put the number two in here for iterations and clicked it once, but we just clicked it twice because we weren't sure uh, what it was going to look like at the first. That's one subdivision, and this is the second subdivision. And this is the wireframe. You hit the, uh, the O key to get that and to toggle it on and off. And anyway, here we go. Uh, we're going to first, what we're going to do is we're going to take the kind of like the darkest color we want in the ambient occlusion map, and we're going to clear all the maps to be that by default. So we shift to click to, from one to the third to select them all, then we right clicked and said um, clear, and then that made all the maps this dark gray color. Now, we, uh, we have white as a primary color, and here's the trick. I'm going to pause for a second. We have to make sure that per vertex is um, selected, not smart culling. In this case, we're using the rectangle brush, so it doesn't have smart culling anyway. But you want per vertex culling, and you want to have fade by angle. These are the two things which allow this, this technique to work. Okay, so we're basically going to use a per vertex culling as a pseudo light, so to speak. And then you're going to see what I mean in a moment. So here we go, continuing along. And so you could easily just use a large brush stroke here, but I'm just using the rectangle brush so I can drag it out perfectly. Um, there we go. And then so what I'm doing is, if you notice, oh, I see also the strength of the paint uh, brushes at 20% because I want to slowly build up this effect. So what I'm doing is I'm going here and I'm dragging out these boxes. And what that's doing is that's kind of like shining a light on it for that brief moment in time. And so, uh, and then I'm, I'm doing it repeatedly over different angles to slowly build up the effect so it's not so harsh. And I just noticed here that I didn't have symmetry on. It's best to use symmetry in this case because we want the same thing to happen on both sides. And uh, there we go. And so as you can see what's happening here, you kind of get this lighting effect that's building up. And if you're a little uh, less patient, you can always increase the strength through 30 or 40. Um, but generally it's a better result when this is a lower number and you do more steps. Okay, and so uh, what we're also doing here is we're hitting the F3 hotkey to toggle the rotate tool. So if you have, for example, the, the uh, shape brush selected, and then you hit F3, it'll toggle to rotate, and then you can just click and rotate the viewport, and then you hit F3 again, and it remembers this was the last brush you're using. So this is our answer to instead of using Control or Shift or Alt for rotating, we just do this toggle method instead. The main reason why we do that is because uh, <coughs> there's only three of these keys, Shift, Alt, and uh, um, Control, and um, we want to uh, they can only be used for so many things. And since this is a 3D program and it's a paint program, um, Alt key is used, um, for example, in the clone brush to specify the uh, reference point, or with some brushes it's used to do like the opposite of something. So there's only so many of those keys. So we opted for the toggle method instead when it comes to these navigational hotkeys. So anyway, as you can see here, we're just repeating this procedure from multiple angles, and we're also focusing more from the top down. So we're doing very few, uh, if any, from bottom up because generally the sunlight is going to be coming from here or you know ceiling lights or whatever. It's very rare to have ground lighting and you probably don't want to bake that into your model. So we're 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 kind of imagining sort of a dome over this character and we're just we're just picking all these angles and we're just dragging this out in order to build up this lightness, this white. And right now you have the lighting of the Blacksmith 3D viewport on, so it's not quite obvious as to what's happening, um, but in a moment we're going to be toggle that light off so you can see that even with the light off, it looks like there's light on. And now I'm going to skip ahead to see if I can find where we get to that. 
because you're getting the point here. You're just going from multiple angles. There we go. Here we go. So by using the G hotkey, you can also find that in the viewport dis um, display modes uh, options. Uh, but the G hotkey is uh, will toggle the light on. So this is with no light. Okay, but look at all this. It appears as if there's light. There's all this sort of soft shadowing in the grooves of the model. That is because um, all these little parts that were there from the different angles, they tend to get hidden uh, by this, uh, the, uh, the per vertex culling. And so as you build up, they just get hit less. And the stuff out here on the surface gets hit more. So it's really, it's essentially doing the exact same thing that light would, would do. This stuff is going to get hit with more light than this stuff. It's not completely hidden as far as, you know, light gets in there, but more light gets up here. And that's the whole point of ambient occlusion maps, right? So this here is without any lighting applied. So if you brought this into a program like uh, Second Life, uh, where the lighting is very flat at best, I'm not exactly sure how they do the lighting, but it's very minimal. You, you, it's, things are pretty flat, and so often you want to bake the lighting into the models to give them a little bit of depth and a bit of realism. Um, and with this technique, uh, with this also sometimes you get little artifacts here and there that you might not want. So right now we're just smudging them out so I took the, uh, the retouch tool and I used the, the smudge type and I'm just kind of going to go through and look for any little rough spots uh, that I might have found and see if for some reason we got this part a little extra light here. It's no big deal, we'll just smudge it out. And there we go. So essentially that is the technique. Uh, really you just have, fade, you start off with a dark color and then you um, fade by angle and per vertex culling. These are the two magic uh, options here. And you just build that light up. And you can, in this case, we're going for an ambient occlusion map. If you wanted a harsher light, um, something more uh, um, unidirectional, you would have done this mostly from one angle and just kind of uh, varied it a little bit from that angle. But in this case, we kind of went all around from the top to the sides to get this sort of sort of global ambience. <laughs> and if you notice in here, uh, this stuff hardly got hit at all in the inner thighs. And um, it looks kind of cool if the character is only going to stay like this, but um, chances are she's going to be animated, she's going to be walking, and that might look a little too dark. So what we're going to do is we're going to just kind of uh, now that we did this, we're going to tweak it. We're going to say it's a little too dark for real, because this is going to be in a game. Uh, we, we want it to look kind of cool, look like there's lighting, but we don't want any really dark shadows where they shouldn't be. So anyway, what I did is I'm using the, uh, the light brush here, and uh, first off, I, um, I'm going to take the lightness up and down, and uh, I put strength at 20%, so it's not too strong, and um, I just did a big brush stroke, and, uh, and I lightened everything up a bit. And now I just hit the G hotkey here to, uh, so I can see it without the Blacksmith 3D lighting. So it's just the color map, the, the, the maps themselves. So also here what I'm doing is I'm doing the contrast and I'm holding the Alt key because I'm going to say, okay, this is a little too much. A little so I'm going to uh, decontrast. I'm going to lower the contrast in here to kind of even it out a bit. And so you hold the Alt key while using this, uh, this brush and that is the uh, opposite effect. So contrast up, down. You hold Alt to get down. Strength 20%. And we notice here that what I did is I didn't realize that I still had fade by angle on. And so when I turn around, this is not going to be good because I'm trying to get everything here. So um, a little bit, uh, I just realized now, look, see, I said, oh my God, okay, I did, the, the front looks good, but it faded off to the sides. So I don't like that. So I'm going to undo a whole bunch of that. Um, down here we see, I'm just going to go undo, I'm going to undo all the way down to where I found um, the, 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 where I the last used a rectangle brush, I think. Uh, what did I do here? Anyway, I undid, I got to the point uh, before I made that mistake, and now I turned off fade by angle and I started doing it again. So now here, I'm gonna lighten it up. So uh, I contrasted it and then it was a little too gray because you want this, the lighter parts, you want it to be kind of white because you don't want the effect of this map to darken the whole thing globally because you want the brightest parts to be white. So <laughs> I lightened up everything after lowering the contrast. 
And so now you can see this sort of these darker regions, they're not so dark anymore. And so that's uh, going to be a little more practical to use. Now here are the maps, and if you look at the maps, you can see this the ambient occlusion in them. And uh, what we're going to do is now, this is, uh, I'm going to pause here for a second. This is the, uh, the, the bleed UV scene tool. And this is extremely handy to use at the end of uh, creating your maps because what it's going to do is it's going to take the, um, the colors at the edge of those seams as you see here. See how the, uh, the, this really dark gray, that's, uh, that's the edge of the UV seam. Um, but a lot of times you're going to have um, de-resing, you're going to have bit mapping, you, um, you're going to the game or whatever it is might do a lower uh, resolution version of that map, and in which case this sort of dark stuff is going to spill in and you're going to see that on your character and we don't want that. So by using a, uh, the bleed UVC, we're going to take the closest colors to the edge here and we're going to bleed it out so it's um, so this, this darkness is nowhere near the edge of the seam. So when this happens, uh, the texture will look relatively good, even though it's been de-rezzed. Okay, so um, I'm in here, and I'm going to change one parameter. I'm going to change the inner radius to 1, and uh, leave the outer radius to 16. And uh, the reason why I do this, because this is going to say, don't go right up to the very edge of the scene. Give it one more pixel, because when we paint it, we do a really good job of painting across that seam and going over it a little bit. And if you do the inner radius to 0, it, it'll, everything will line up right, but that seam will just be a little harsher uh, when you have uh, like filtering happening. It, it won't uh, be as smooth of a transition, but if we leave this to one, you get a smoother transition across the seam when it's being rendered. Um, so if you know the seams are fine and you just want to bleed it outwards, use inner radiuses one. If you're bringing this in the texture from another program and you want to um, and you want to sort of fix things that seems aren't right to begin with, then put that at zero and work from there. And what I did is, uh, I did it again, I made outer radius 64. And this is going to take a while, so you might think that the software is hanging, you might think that it's crashed or something. If this because it's just when you do a larger radius like this, it just takes a long time. Um, so just go grab yourself a, you know, a glass of water or coffee or whatever and then come back and it's all done. Now here we see, um, uh, all those dark areas have been bled outwards now and now the, the color is going right up to the edges and the, other than these areas which were really far away from the edges uh, the, the colors have been bled out appropriately so when these maps are de-resed they will look much better okay and so that's it for the technique it's really simple uh, what you can do is once you have these maps you could either uh, you can uh, you can directly inside Blacksmith 3D, you might want to put them in as layers. Uh, you, you can do these on a layer on top of another map and then blend it in there. You can blend it afterwards in a 2D painting application. You can do whatever. You can do these once and reuse them for many different textures after this. So you don't have to always do this technique. You can do it once, save these files off, and every time you do a new texture and you say, for this same model, that is, and you were like, okay, I want to have ambient occlusion on it. Like, I don't have to do that again. I already have them. So you can put it in here. Okay? So um, again, here we're just showing it without the lighting in Blacksmith 3D. So this is just the pure flat texture map, but it looks like there's lighting because the lighting is baked into this ambient occlusion map. All right? So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you find it uh, very interesting and enlightening. Uh, please subscribe to the station. Uh, please post your questions below if you have any. Uh, we have lots more videos to come. Um, I'm putting these out as fast as I humanly can. So um, again, thank you very much for watching.